Obviously, social networks and Twitter have been a fantastic tool to develop free speech and open debates that maybe were not possible before that. Sure. Now, there's also another side of it, which is that there can be some disinformation, fake news, Fake, fake news? What? That's crazy. Fake news. Yeah. <laughs> believe it or not. I don't believe you it. You believe that? Wait, believe it how do I know this is real? <laughs> now the question is, and, and actually I think there's a flip side indeed to social networks, and there's a code of conduct that the EU has proposed about yeah. disinformation. Okay. And recently Twitter just decided to walk away from it. So is this um, because Twitter doesn't I mean, respect fact that information needs to be moderated, and actually you've been pretty vocal on uh, content moderation, so just what are your thoughts on that? Well, I, I'm generally a fan of um, that we should have uh, free speech um, as much as possible, as much as is allowed by the laws of any country. So, um, you know, I think that, you know, say for France, we should um, allow things that are allowed by law. Um, and if the people are, want the laws to be different, then pass a different law and we'll adhere to that law. But, but for, for Twitter to go beyond the law, that, you know, that doesn't seem quite right to me. I, I think we want to allow the people to express themselves. Um, and, and, and really, if you have to say, when does free speech matter? Uh, free speech matters, uh, and it's only relevant, if, if people are allowed to say things that you don't like because otherwise it's not free speech. Um, and and I, would, I would take that if, if somebody says something, you know, potentially offensive, but that's, that's actually okay. Now, now we're not, not going to promote those, you know, offensive uh, tweets, but, uh, but I think people should be able to say things because the alternative is censorship and then, and frankly, I think if you go down the censorship route, that it's only a matter of time before censorship is turned upon you. Um, and, and, the, and then the, so that, that's why it's important, um, you know, for in the U.S. you've got the First Amendment, uh, Freedom of Speech Amendment, and you say, like, why did they do that? It's because, why did they pass that amendment? It was because they, they were not able to say what they wanted to say in the countries that they came from, and they wanted to make sure that they could say what they wanted to say. So I, I believe in freedom for the people uh, to say things um, and that even if somebody said that, that it's actually in some ways a sign of health if people are able to, if someone you don't like is able to say something you don't like, rather than try to suppress that, you say like, you know what, that's a good sign because that means I can say things and that person will not like what I say, but I can still say it. And that's a really big deal. I mean, freedom of speech, that's something that's very, I mean, at the core of our values. But now, if we look at young people and being in the digital field, and we provide digital services that people use, there's also a move towards cyberbullying and harassment, which I think we all, it's also our role to educate young people on how to use the technology and make sure that because some behaviors, I mean, on Twitter or other social networks, yes. can actually have devastating effects on, on people. Uh, uh, is Twitter doing something about it, or would you be willing to engage with other players? Actually, at Orange, we do a lot in that space. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I'm, That's true. <laughs> I, think, I think, you know, Twitter is for sure willing to engage with others. Um, and like, as I said, the, the overarching goal is to have Twitter be a force a positive force for civilization, and um, you know. So, and and and, it, and, and if, if you're on the platform and you're being harassed or bullied or whatever, obviously that's a negative experience. Um, so, um, so you know what we're doing is it's we, we call it sort of freedom of speech, but not freedom of reach, uh, which is that if you yes you can say offensive things, but then your content is going to get downrated. <laughs> so, if you're a jerk, your, your reach will drop. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> I think that's the right thing. And Antoine, I don't know if you will be competing with L'Oréal to launch the future fragrance for Elon Musk. 
and uh, the <laughs> Brian, the Musk, so you have to compete very hard. Yeah. But maybe uh, you, you, I, I know that you had already the lunch, uh, but uh, there is now the dessert, so you can put your question. All right. Um, first of all, in the name of um, Le Groupe Les Echos Le Parisien, thank you very much for being here. Uh, yeah. This group is a co-host of Vivatech, and it's, uh, it's great to, to have you and welcome. I like it. Uh, so, cha change of uh, subject uh, from Twitter. Um, at LVMH, our oldest maison is called Claude de Lambray. I saw you enjoyed good wine. Yeah. Um, it's 650 years old. Wow. Louis Vuitton was founded in 1854. Our most ancient American maison, Tiffany, was founded in 1837. The sum of the years of existence of all our maison at LVMH is 8,393 years old. Wow. Tesla is a teenager, right? Yes, yes. 19, yes. 19 years old. Yeah. And its market cap is already higher than LVMH. So it's not a question of age. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so, first question. First question, how much longer are you going to make us look so bad? <laughs> <laughs> Second question, more serious. Do you feel the creation of value is more challenging? in traditional or innovative business? <laughs> well, first of all, it's an honor to be here and, and uh, speak with you, so thanks for having me. Uh, you know, evaluations are, are a strange thing because, um, you know, sometimes I've said, hey, I think the stock price is too high at Tesla, and then the stock price goes up. I'm like, okay. Um, so if you, you tweet, is it going up or down? No, the crazy thing, <laughs> uh, I mean, I've, when I've tweeted, I think the stock price is too high, almost always it goes up. So, I don't know, it's, it's a strange thing. So, I, I guess in the, in the case of Tesla, if, if the, 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 really, the, the value of the company is primarily uh, on the basis of autonomy. So, uh, in, in my opinion, um, because if you look at our total vehicle output, it's, um, you know, it'll be almost two million vehicles. This, this year or something like that. Um, but that's, that's still only 2% of total vehicle production. So then why is our market cap so high? And it's because the potential for autonomy um, is, uh, is it, that the, the value of autonomy is so high um, that even, even if you have a discounted percentage probability of autonomy happening, um, that is still incredibly valuable. Um, so the average passenger car is uh, used only about 10 hours a week, so an average of about one and a half hours a day. But if you have an autonomous robo-taxi, the utility is, might be 50 or 60 hours a week out of 168 hours. So now you've got a vehicle that costs the same but has five times the utility. So it's so gigantic a change that that's really, I think, uh, the main driver of our value. Um, and uh, although I've said this before, I think we will solve autonomy soon. <laughs> did, did you expect that uh, Tesla will be at this level of market cap? Uh, no, I did not expect Tesla would be at this level of market cap. Because it's just extraordinary. Uh, yeah. Unfair, I, by the way. <laughs> I mean, I don't set the price, so. Yeah. <laughs> you don't set. <laughs> Maybe just a, a, another quick question. Um, I tried. Mid Journey the other day. Yeah, Mid Journey's, Mid -journey's amazing. Right, and, and I asked the, the software to make a Louis Vuitton advertising campaign with only two words. So here it's a bad question for you, Maurice. Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> if, if, you are, if you want to put me out of a job. <laughs> that was my question. Do you feel this advertising production industry is going to be threatened by AI? Uh, be careful. Be not, careful. Not at all. <laughs> it's totally safe. <laughs> I mean, AI is definitely going to be a massive disruptive force. I mean, it, AI is probably the, the most disruptive technology ever. Um, I mean, the crazy thing is that, you know, the, the advantage that humans have is that uh, we're smarter than other creatures. Like, if we got into a fight with a gorilla, the gorilla would definitely win. Um, but we're smart. so. But now, for the first time, there's going to be something that is smarter than the smartest human, like way smarter than the smartest human. And uh, as you can see from the journey, the art that AI can create is incredible. It's so beautiful, and it does it, you know, within seconds. 
So we're at, I mean, I think, you know, there's that sort of saying, uh, may you live in interesting times, which I think is like not exactly a good thing sometimes, uh, but, but would we actually live, I think we live in the most interesting of times. Um, the advent of AI, and I actually thought to myself at one point, like, uh, should, you know, do I re would I really want to be alive at this point? Like, let's say that there is some AI Armageddon um, that happens, some sort of AI apocalypse. I think I would still be, want to be alive at this time to see it. <laughs> and hopefully, you know, hopefully not, not create, cause it. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's just a, I think we live in an, an extremely interesting time, you know. Um, because the things that you see AI being able to do now, it's going to do much more with each passing year. Um, cars will absolutely drive themselves better than any person could drive. Um, we'll have humanoid robots. Um, like, so te Tesla's developing a humanoid robot. Um, we call it the T-800. It's a, <laughs> yeah, some people get that joke. <laughs> hey. um, <laughs> it's a Terminator. Um, so we can tweet that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, but but if if you, if you like to say what is an, what is an economy? An economy is GDP per capita times capita. Now, what happens if you don't actually have a limit on capita? If you if, if you have an unlimited number of uh, sort of people or robots, um, it's not, it's not clear what meaning an economy has at that point because you, ha you have an unlimited economy, effectively. Um, so, so, like, on the good side, the, the plus side of AI is that I think we are heading for an age of abundance, um, where any goods and services that you want, you can just have. Um, so that's the, that's the, that's the, the, the positive side of, of, of AI future, is an age of abundance. From the advertising side, I must say that uh, we are using AI since many years, and it is helping us a great deal. And uh, this tool that we are already using, and I think it will be helping us to do even faster some very good ad. It will be probably long time before they replace the creative minds. Uh, Asmita, maybe you have an opinion on that, and maybe you can. Asmita is the CDO of L'Oréal, and uh, she, she knows a lot about uh, digital, so maybe you can tell us a, a little bit about uh, advertising and AI, and put your question to Elon. Yeah, so I'll pick up from advertising and from what you said before about Twitter. So now we know that Twitter is expensive, and we know that it aims to have free speech. The question I have is about winning the advertiser's trust to be a preferred social media platform in the current context where the expected revenue you know, in 2023 is lower than 2022. You have brought in new leadership, Linda. So I wanted to know that uh, how time, the support, the freedom, because she's an advertising expert, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so will she be able to manage the situation and how? Yeah, I, th I, think, uh, I, think, I think Linda's great, um, so I think Linda's going to do uh, amazing things for, for Twitter um, and obviously um, understands where advertisers are coming from very deeply, uh, understands uh, the concerns that advertisers have and I think will do a great job in addressing those concerns. Um, you know, the, the, a key part is, um, you know, say like if, if you're an advertiser, what content do you want to appear next to? Um, and depending upon what advertiser, you know, the sensitivity of the brand, um, if you're, for example, uh, say Disney and you're advertising a children's movie, then you want to have, you know, all ages content, you know. Um, and by the way, Disney is one of our biggest advertisers. So. Um, so, so, we, so we, it's really just making sure that the content adjacency matches uh, what a brand is comfortable with. Um, and, and then there's some cases where the, the content is like, you know, there's not going to be any advertising because nobody wants to advertise next to it. And that's going to be some of the more controversial stuff. Um, yeah. I have a follow-up 
on that, you know, because we were talking about content. You have just made the announcement that there will be ad revenue sharing for creators. Yes. Yeah. And that has a condition. It will be done when they are verified blue tick creators and the advertising is to verified blue tick users. Yes. Now, if with that, how, how does that impact your focus on subscription revenues? Because to be blue tick, uh, you know, there's a subscription versus advertising revenues focus. Yeah, so a, a big part of like, when you say like, say how many impressions does something get? Uh, you say like, well, were those impressions real or not real? You know, was it, uh, you know, a computer just what, running 100,000 fake accounts? Because that obviously doesn't count because the computer's not going to buy anything. Um, so that's why our focus is on, on verified users because in, 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 we are admittedly conflating verification and subscription uh, at, at Twitter. So you could say like verified subscriber or something like that. That's not po it's not possible to game that. So you know it's real, you know it's solid, and you know it's not a computer. Um, so that's why it's that, that's why we're, we're, we're focused on that um, is it, to ensure the authenticity of the views and that it, it really uh, that pe real people are seeing uh, what's going on. I mean, the sheer amount of, of bot and scam and spam activity in social media is insane. Um, and we're talking about AI. It's very obvious that especially with today's AI, uh, the computers can pass every, like, are you a human test? In fact, I think they can pass are you a human test better than a human. <laughs> you know, sort of you say, like, identify a traffic light or something like that. Okay, let me tell you, Tesla can identify a traffic light. So if we're, you know, and, and, but even like open source uh, AI stuff right now um, can pass all of the, the human tests. So you have to have something that there's better authentication than, than that, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I think that um, confidence and trust is something which we lose fast and that we regain slowly. Uh, I have no doubt, personally, that Twitter will gain back the trust, provided that you do the right thing, and I'm sure that you will do the right thing. So this is uh, uh, something which um, is probably just a hiccup in the time, but you need to do the right thing, and I'm yeah, sure yeah. that uh, uh, you, you will do it. I have um, two small questions. One sure. which is uh, 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 regarding Ukraine. You have uh, helped enormously Ukraine yeah. at the beginning with Starlink, mm -hmm. and I think we owe you a lot because uh, without uh, access <laughs> access to internet and without access to communication, the war would have been finished. Uh, what is your take on uh, that experience? Yeah, that, that was a, uh, I mean, that whole situation is very complex. Um, no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's really, really complex. Um, um, as, as you point out, uh, Starlink did play, play a pivotal role um, because uh, Russia had actually taken out all of the satellite communications and all of the ground communications except for Starlink. It was the only one that was still operating. Um, and, and even today, it is still the only one that is effective at the front lines. And uh, Starlink today is the backbone of the Ukrainian military communications. Um, so, you know, I thought it was important to help out um, and um, but I but I, I do I do hope for some kind of resolution soon because I, I think it's, it's it's terribly sad that that's the flower of the youth of Ukraine and Russia uh, who don't want to be there um, that they're dying in trenches right now and I, I sure hope we can figure out some means to peace soon The last question is going back uh, to this crowd. You have a lot of startups. You have a lot of young people who want to <laughs> okay. be successful. Sure. What are the two or three pieces of advice that you would give them? Well, you have a question over there? Yes. 
do we have okay. a microphone? Because Elon has accepted to take questions from the floor. Sure. Charlotte? Allez, un microphone. <laughs> Donnez, allez, allez, prenez-le de l'autre côté. De l'autre côté, allez. Allez, go. You have the mic, you go. Yes. Okay. Um, Hello. I don't know why you got the mic, but please go. All right. Um, so I had a question about uh, all of your different companies and projects in the past 10 years. Uh, there's a pattern that I've seen to have identified. Short question. Every single one of your companies would work a lot better on Mars than on Earth. <laughs> like sure. Sure. Same for Tesla, uh, electric cars, obviously all the other ones can yeah. work. Yeah. And, I mean, SpaceX is obvious. Um, okay. Yeah. Give the mic uh, back. Yeah, me and, yeah uh, I mean, uh, me and Mars should get a room, basically. <laughs> I, I, I love Mars. <laughs> okay. <laughs> huh? No, 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 no. Now I want that you oh, give the I, mic. I, I Sorry, guys. Uh, oh, I was there. Okay, sure. What's the question? What uh, is the question? My name is Nayul, uh, co founder and CEO at ClickUp. We make AI tiny. So, Tesla is one of our target. Uh, we'd love to work with you, Ellen. Uh, and my husband is actually ex Mobileye, who hardware okay. like the infrastructure and MLOps. So, okay. <laughs> okay, my, sure. Oh! Oh! Okay. Yeah. <laughs> One last question. Last sure. oh, more. <laughs> Guys, whatever. Yeah. I'm okay, just, I'm go. Fine with it. However long you want to do it. No, no. <laughs> totally crazy. Uh, Alizy. Yeah. Sure, that's great. Okay, so um, the question is how do you think it's relevant, the mental health for a human being? Well, I, I, think, I think you'd want to have okay. a very good mental health on a trip to Mars. Uh, make sure everyone's sane because uh, the, you don't want someone opening the airlock in the middle of the night. Um, <laughs> so I think sanity is very important to, uh, if you're going to Mars. Donnez au premier rang. Premier rang. Non, attendez, s'il vous plaît, ne donnez pas le micro comme ça. Ne donnez pas le micro que... Attendez que je vous le donne. <laughs> voilà. Please. We're just going to des descend into chaos. Oh, <laughs> oh, uh, uh, uh. Just a second. <laughs> OK, thank you would get. OK, allez-y. OK. okay. Um, thank you. So I'm Nathaniel Ackerman from... OK. We, 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 allez. I, I think we, we're going to just... It's going to be chaos. Uh, Can you but... hear me? Mais attendez, si vous voulez que ça se passe, il faut se calmer. Allez-y. Hey, great t-shirt. Allez-y. Okay. So, Allez um, you talked about uh, the European regulation, Elon, and um, you know that there have been uh, many amendments due to LLM uh, deployment. Do you think, uh, how can we integrate the use and actual use of this LLM in a non-controlled way? in the, the, the current discussion uh, Can you make the it legislation. Sure? Thank you. So is, is it like you. You're asking about safe, safe LLM uh, use? Or? Okay, just a second. No, please, <laughs> it, it will answer the question. Was it about safe L safety in LLMs or? Sorry, I didn't hear the whole question. It's like uh, safe application of LLMs or, or what is it?
okay. and, and, and protect from the Jews, no Jews, no okay. Jews. It's, uh, sure. uh, okay, when the regulation has been created, LLM didn't exist. So what would be your suggestion regarding regulating LLMs? Well, I, I think more broadly, um, th there should be um, uh, regulatory uh, insight into LLMs and, and really any other uh, form of AI. I mean, there's, I'm not sure, LLM, I, I don't think LLMs are the ultimate um, form of AI. Um, I mean, there's sort of an inside joke on AI of like, who do you think will be the, the American president in 2032? Uh, diffusion uh, or transformers? <laughs> That's an inside joke, but yeah. <laughs> it's like, what does that mean? <laughs> um, but that like might be a real, it might be real. Um, so, yeah. So we will have the, just a second, the two latest questions, one here and one in, in that region. So, go ahead. Silence. <laughs> Vous voulez ou pas? I mean, no. If we don't listen to the question, <laughs> we will not be able to continue. Well. Okay, thank you. I'm doing so forth, and we have uh, uh, every every year we have the Palmarès, which is uh, 13 under 30. My question is, what business uh, young people should uh, focus on? Uh, sure. Uh, <laughs> Well, I think generally, I think it's important to focus on something. I, I, I don't think. So uh, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, I, I think um, you want to focus on something that you are personally passionate about, that you personally care about. Um, it's very hard to be motivated for a product that you don't really feel strongly about. Um, and it doesn't have to be high tech. It could be in any, in any field. It's just it's got to be a product that you feel is... is really needs to be there that, that, and, and something that you personally love. Um, and I would listen to your instincts on, on you know, do, do you love this product or service? Because um, it's, it, it's kind of impossible to know what do other people love. But if you love it, that's a good sign. Um, and um, and that, could, that could be small to large, any kind of, any field. It's, it's, it doesn't be, have to be high tech. But if, if you don't love, if you, if you don't really love the product that you're making, if you can't, like a good test would be that you can't wait for this product to be on the market. That if you, and if that's the case, you are, you're going in the right direction. Great. Uh, no, no. The last question, we have, wow. uh-oh, uh-oh, we have a French, uh, no, no, je ne vais pas pouvoir en parler. <laughs> Oh, we hot. have a French <laughs> saying, which is, la vérité sort de la bouche des enfants. Il y en a un, ici. Non, non, le gamin, oui, oui. Uh, no, no, you, you. No, the kid. <laughs> ah, non, c'est pas vous, c'est le gamin. <laughs> le... En français, oh, oh, okay, okay, qui okay. pose ses questions en français. Tu poses ta question en français, on traduira. <laughs> non, non, tu poses la question, toi. N'aie pas peur. Il est asking for Neuralink and about the human testing and he is very excited. When do you when do you think that we will be able to start uh, testing? Uh, in all virtual world, Victoria VR. Sure. Well, um, so, so Neuralink is, um, first of all, I, I want to assure everyone, if you may be worried about Neuralink, that um, you will see, uh, Neuralink is going to be a fairly slow process because anything that's done in humans, it's very slow. So sometimes people think that this, this suddenly we're going to be chipping everyone's head and then before they know it, everyone's connected to the internet and then we're in trouble um, with your brain. Um, so it's going to happen very slowly. Uh, hopefully later this year we'll do our first uh, human uh, device implantation and this will be for, for someone that has um, sort of tetraplegic, quadriplegic, um, does not have, it will, has lost the connection from their, their brain to their body um, and we, we think we should be able to, that, that person will be able to uh, communicate uh, as fast as someone who has a fully functional body. 
Um, so that's going to be a big deal. And we, and we see a path beyond that uh, to actually transfer the signals from the motor cortex of the brain to past the injury in the spinal cord and actually re um, enable someone's body to be used again. So um, essentially shunting the signals past the broken point um, and, uh, and restore potentially full, full body um, use to someone that has uh, completely lost the connection. And I mean, you can imagine like if say Stephen Hawking were alive today, what a profound change that would be. Um, and um, so that's our first application. And uh, if uh, it's looking like that, uh, the first case will be later this year. So, yeah. Fantastic. So, now, uh, I would like a very, very warm rose of applause to Elon Musk. No, no, no. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So, oh, oh, thank I, you. I just want to say, you guys are great. <laughs> you guys are all, I mean, it's, it's so inspiring Look. to see so much energy and so much positive energy uh, in the room. So, uh, this is uh, very inspiring for the future. <laughs> Merci à vous tous. Thank you. Uh, great, thank you. No, 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 no. Okay. Thank you. We move. Right. You guys, if I go down there, it's going to be crazy.